Hi guys, it is May 4, 2019. I want to read some comments underneath this video that I posted uh, when on the 2nd. More flooding, more rescues, more homes destroyed. And then I want to go into uh, some of what I have bookmarked just within the last 15 hours. Weather related events, more people, more people are struggling. Unbelievable what is taking place. Like many disasters occurring in so many states. And then, or perhaps before, I will show you there are areas in this country where you're going to be flooded a whole lot more. Let me first read these comments. Um, Oh my gosh, my friend and I were just talking about this. Forecasters predicted no rain today, and then the sky opened up with strong rains, thunder, and lightning. This has happened so many times lately. They seem to never be right anymore. Well, that's what I was talking about in that video. In Tyler, Texas, a sewer main collapsed because of the rain, unleashing more than 1,000, 100,000 gallons of raw sewage into the creek, sinkholes, flooded roads, trees down, power down, all over the area of northeast Texas. We were already in a flood warning and had a flash flood warning before the storm yesterday. Actually, the storm hit here last night. Many of these areas received well over four to six inches within a six-hour time period. The storm you showed this evening is a new storm that developed earlier today. And these storms just erupt out of nowhere. Well, think about the lasers. Oh, a billion watts shoot it into a cloud and voila, you have rain. About 8.30 to 9 p.m., they increased the next rads to make the storm worse. They were spraying the air last night and tonight too. Guys, we're in trouble. We're in deep, deep trouble. But this was heartbreaking. And this is what people are going through. OK, I've been saying this. Now, in that video, in, in the video uh, that I posted, I was talking about another subscriber of mine and what happened to she and her husband after not Harvey flooded her home, but the Army Corps of Engineers and the hell that people go through. Well, I want to read this comment. Um, okay, I've been saying this. I'm a single mother of three boys and we were affected in 2017 as well. And not from Harvey either. But yes, the reservoir release. You have no idea how they even did it unless you were there. Actually, I do know because I heard from my subscriber who told me that the release came before they, they thought that the release was going to occur. And what happened to them? Suddenly, they had to be rescued because the water suddenly came with such a force. So this woman here is confirming it. Um, you have no idea how they did it unless you were here. At first they said they'd do it in the AM so that people would have time to evacuate. They could leave their homes with a little bit of sunlight. And when they start the release, we'd have like three to four or five hours to leave. Nope. That night around 7 p.m., they did a news alert stating they were going to go ahead with the release in the next two hours that night around 7 p.m. So they're, they're claiming, both these subscribers have claimed that they said the release was coming and then they released the waters. Well, here it seems they released the waters uh, 10 to 12 hours earlier than they said they would. Do you know what that does? Oh, that 
could kill people, leave them completely in floodwaters that they thought would occur a lot later. Did I have to mention that? Yeah. Because the reservoir was so flooded, or too flooded, with the rain. That's why they released it earlier. Mind you, that day was the first full day with zero rain since Harvey had come or came. Um, well, what happened? The release of the reservoirs destroyed her job. Everything was closed for a week or two anyways, but there was no way I could find a job right then because of road closures and flooding. I had emailed, talked on the phone to my realtor company many times. I still have the emails. Them saying they completely understood and just try to catch up, blah, 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 blah. I had savings to pay September's rent and half of October. By then, I was looking for a new job constantly, couldn't find one, reached out to all the charities around town. Literally none of them would help. Didn't matter how much I begged and cried, poured my ha heart out, a few claiming they didn't receive any of the government funding, which was over $80 million, to help with rental assistance. I told them they were listed as a program who had, but then you argue or you get hung up on. My car finally stopped working, had water damage. And guess what? A week before Thanksgiving, the Realty Company posted an eviction, an eviction notice on my door. I was so upset. That money I had paid to show them, hey, I'm trying, but it's hard. I could have used that for a deposit or a hotel elsewhere. And they didn't have to do that. I stayed in constant communication and never had the idea they were kicking my three boys and me out. A week before Thanksgiving, right before Christmas, we were homeless in hotels, at the park, in their dad's neighborhood, whatever, till I finally was able to get a good job again last year, living in and out of hotels. Cost way too much for a deposit when you're living paycheck to paycheck for weekly hotels, not to mention anywhere I found for us to live, I had to pay double deposit because of the eviction. That was because of a national emergency. And just want to say, I have no problem with cursing, but I know that a lot of people do. I eventually left Houston and um, went to my grandmother's house in Victoria this past November. I hated leaving my good job, though. I got on homeless housing assistance, but my caseworkers always gave me the runaround or wouldn't answer the phone uh, whenever rentals would call them. Thank goodness I am now in a three-bedroom. Uh, I believe 100% that release was intentional, and nobody will ever be able to tell me different. I went from being a struggling single mother, able to just get by. My bills were all paid, but we could never do any expensive family outings, moving, movies, arcades. We'd spend time together and do free things around Houston. I went from that to boom somehow below struggling. My oldest son's grades were still affected because he ended up going to four different schools that year. Sorry for this huge rambling. Don't ever apologize. Do not ever apologize, any of you, for sharing your experience. Because Americans, those who are comfortable, really need to understand what is happening here. And I wish that they would learn from experience, but I guess that's a hard thing for people to do. I don't know. Uh, it means that they have to get out of their own experience and listen to, to what is taking place with somebody else in their life uh, and not impose their experience on others or what they think. You know, this is what I would have done. So, because you didn't do that, well, then clearly you are the major situation worse or you could have done that. You could have, you know what? <laughs> um, 
that's very sad to me that a lot of Americans have that kind of response. They just, we social engineer one another. We tell one another to shut up, I don't want to hear it. It's your fault in so many different ways. So, um, yes, she is still recovering along with the other subscriber that I talked of in this video. Houston, what happened to the millions of dollars given to us? Why were there still molded mattresses and piles and piles of ruined belongings along the roads a year after Harvey? They did not care. Well, it comes down to care. And unfortunately, a lot of people just don't care. All right, this video uh, or this comment, you know, it's interesting. If people wish to start building community, read M. Scott Peck's The Different Drum. Read M. Scott Peck's People of the Lie. And she writes, Dr. Peck was not very optimistic about us being able to accomplish the community building we need in order to save ourselves. Dr. Peck was not optimistic in uh, when he was writing People of the Lie because he understood the condition of the American people most, not all, but most. He understood that most were just walking the low road and would do nothing to pull themselves out of this uh, very self-centered, narcissistic condition that so many Americans are really, they're living that. And they don't, you don't have to be narcissistic, um, pathologically narcissistic to have the tendencies. And those tendencies are within a lot of Americans. And that is causing so much, well, damage to our society and it's it is absolutely one huge factor in why we are living this nightmare but here my sister-in-law was in Davenport <clears throat> Iowa last weekend and stayed at a hotel along the river she is not hip to weather warfare but she said that the river was flowing in two different directions at once that the middle was flowing one way and the edges flowing the other. I never seen a river do that before, she said. Okay, the frequencies. Now, there's an awful lot going on. There's not one method that they're using to flood. Yes, they create these torrential downpours and you get six inches in six hours of rain. There are, I went to check out the disaster in Baton Rouge two, three years ago, the flood that took place there. And I interviewed a lot of those in the area and they were saying they closed off the sewers. They closed them down. They did not open them. That's why there was so much flooding in non-flood plain zones. Frequencies you can use the frequencies to push the river. And yes, you can create a river that's flowing in one direction in the middle. That's how dangerous these frequencies are. So this is, and I showed you uh, in the video that Davenport was flooded because of a levee breach. So this is a time release of that levee breach.
Okay, that was pretty fast moving. All right, um, here. According to a report by Reuters on Friday, the U.S. Coast Guard said that it had closed the Mississippi River near St. Louis to boat and barge traffic as excessive rains and heavy snow melt swelled the major shipping waterway to near record levels. The Coast Guard reportedly said that the river, a crucial transportation artery for shipments of grain, agricultural chemicals, energy products, and other commodities will be closed from River Mile Marker 179 to 184. U.S. Coast Guard Public Affairs Officer Brandon Giles said the Mississippi is closed to all vessel traffic due to extremely high water levels and fast-moving currents. And fast-moving currents, well, that can be caused by electromagnetic frequencies. All right. East Texas lakes and rivers are full and near flooding. And guess what? You have an awful lot of rain coming still after overnight storms water levels are high at lakes and rivers across east texas right now lake tyler lake jacksonville lake cherokee and lake gladewater are closed and the angelina river is continuing to swell kck's mike miller joins us live in the studio with a look at these high water levels mike well, Casey, according to the Texas Water Development Board, pretty much all reservoirs and lakes across East Texas are 100% full right now because of the heavy rain last night. At Lake Tyler, the water has come up onto people's property, as you can see. Boathouses, docks, yards, even some homes now dealing with flooding. The city has closed boat ramps and parking lots there to prevent people from using the lake. They don't want any boats creating wake, which could further damage structures and the environment. One man who lives on the lake tells us yesterday the water level was about four inches above normal. But after those storms came through, the lake was two feet higher. He's really? Okay. Well, I don't think rain could actually push the river so much higher. Something else is going on. But I, I show you this. You guys in East Texas, yeah, I think you're going to be looking at more flooding. So, uh, my, my computer is running slow today. North New York, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. Oh, it's above flood, flood levels, and already Governor Cuomo along with the emergency preparedness officials, state officials, state police, and the National Guard. They're on it. They're on it. They're going to prepare as best they can to prevent your homes from being flooded out. Oh, and didn't you go through this, was it last year, 2017? Uh, the immediate concern for us is uh, the emergency preparation in case of flooding. Uh, as everyone has heard over the days, uh, Lake Ontario is just at about flood level. Uh, Lake Erie is at flood level. Uh, so we have a problem along the entire northern coast of the state. Uh, I would like to say this is new and novel. Uh, but it's not. As a matter of fact, I've been at this exact spot uh, talking about the exact same issue in the past. Okay, yeah. I will link below, but you guys who live in that area of New York, I believe that you are going to face more flooding because you did face it, uh, what, 2017. Okay, great, isn't it? And look, your officials are on it. They're there to protect you. They're there to protect you. So if you're not protected, well, they can say, we did our best. Yeah. Well. Oh. I want to play a little bit of this video, Must See Horrific Mississippi River Flooding 2019 on this channel 
um, Dobrinch's channel. Sorry for the mispronunciation, but I will link below to everything, and I'm glad that he posted this video. The weather's getting dire. The rain's not stopping. This could be a catastrophe that we've never seen before. Right now, the rivers work instantly to be the fourth highest flood, and the water has rose 16 feet in the last 24 hours. It's crazy. I took one glimpse at the forecast in Peoria, Illinois, which is upriver on Illinois, which all the water runs down through Grafton, Alton, St. Louis, beyond. The next 10 days is terrible. It's supposed to rain almost every other day or every day. There's a damn good chance of it. As you can see here, these pictures were taken yesterday in Grafton. And check out this one. It's found online by an unnamed source. That's pure water coming off the bluffs. That's how much rain we got yesterday. The ground's saturated. You can't hold it anymore. Everything we get from here on is just going to run. Look at the river here. This is a live feed from St. Louis. It's running fast. Various. It's come up a lot. It's not real high yet. But it's going to get worse. With the rain coming, who knows? 93 could easily get topped. Very. Easily. 93 at the flood. All right. Well, that's what everybody is saying. It's going to get worse. All this water that you've seen around here shouldn't be here. Not all of this is farmland, if you can comprehend that red mind around it. Lady Bright is straight across in front of my home. Um, all the water you're seeing around me is a result of the Lady Bright. My name is Sherry Peeker, and we are in Miller City, Illinois. I've lived here nine years. Run, that's a run. <laughs> Today we voted out. The anchor needs to come back through here just to check out the situation to see how the house was. Mama missed you. We took out what we could before, while we could go out on the road, but the water came up really quickly, faster than we anticipated, so we kind of scrambled out really quick. The New Year's flood of 15, 16, it washed a lot of sand in. It washed in anywhere from a foot to six feet of sand. But my husband needed to get the sand off the land to try to farm again because that's what he does for a living. He decided to scrape it up here and build this levee for us and it's been worth it. It saved us. The uh, Mississippi on January 1, 2016, it over topped our levee system, dirt levee system. Now we've come up to May here where uh, the river is going through the levee and now it's back water all up into several towns. My name is Taylor Tatum. I'm the Alexander County Board Chairman. The Corps in the past has always worked for a levy district. We put up 20%, the levy district puts up 20%, and the Corps puts up 80%, and they put the levy back. They have a formula. They said, we're sorry, you guys only reach a 0.75 on our formula. We can't spend the money. The core estimated at $12 million. We have 400,000 that we're going to be able to provide for a rental of tractors. Uh, the farmers are going to donate their labor. We're asking for help. There's only 7,000 people in our county. We're not rich. Neighbors look after neighbors, and we're just asking maybe for the federal government to help us out a little bit. Wow. Really pissed off. <laughs> really mad that they don't see a necessity in, in repairing this levy. I mean, granted, there's not a lot of people that live down here, but there's so much farmland. This is how people make their living. That's how we make our living. 
in nine years, this is my third flood, like a big flood like this. Sad. I want to be home. I want to sleep in my bed tonight. Fix the damn levee, please. We need it. Why are the levees breaking all over the place? Why isn't the Army Corps of Engineers fixing the levees? They want you off that land. And they will continue on flooding you until you get off that land. You move somewhere else. People have to start researching Agenda 2030. We're all being shuffled into mega regions where they can have complete control over every aspect of our life. Yeah. Well, as crazy as that sounds, uh, if you do the research, you'll find out. Mm. I'm not crazy for saying it. The people who are implementing the United Nations Agenda 2030 plan, they're the crazy ones. According to Reuters, the Mississippi River has reached record high levels in the area of Rock Island, Illinois. The higher than normal water levels are due to melting heavy snowpack coupled with rain. Other parts of the Mississippi were experiencing major flooding on Friday along the Iowa-Illinois border, but they're not expected to reach the same historic levels. Hydrologist Justin Palmer said the river will remain vulnerable for the rest of the season. Wow. For the rest of the season. Rivers across the area are rising tonight. Some homes and businesses along the Mississippi are underwater, and in so many communities, this Friday night will be spent sandbagging. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Steve Savard. I'm Courtney Brand. News 4 crews are tracking the water levels in communities up and down the Mississippi, and right now some are dealing with a flash flooding threat as others see water topping levees. Our team is watching out for you. Let's begin with Ashley Lincoln live in Winfield, 45 miles northwest of St. Louis in Lincoln County. Well, Courtney and Steve, we can tell our viewers that the water is moving in this area very quickly. Fire officials just told me this entire area you see behind me, all of that was dry land this morning. You can see it's completely saturated with water, but right now they are focusing all of their attention on this levee system behind me. This is a low-lying levee system, and my cameraman, Chuck, is going to zoom down in on the group of people down there, and that's the group of volunteers and fire officials. They are sandbagging parts of that levee system because water is starting to make its way through. And because of all this, the department has issued a voluntary evacuation order for people living north of Winfield and Foley. Here's some video we shot earlier of volunteers. All right. Look, guys, things are, things are really, really bad. For so many people to happen to their property if that water starts to come in i don't know whether to leave i don't know whether to stay you know but i've been saying my prayers sorry i just i've just been saying my prayers well you're you're living in war so you can pray all you want but we are in a war and they are using weather as a weapon. So when man is using weather as a weapon, your prayers are not going to, well, enter their psyche and suddenly they'll become moral, uh, caring, compassionate human beings. So, uh, you know, watching this day after day after day, guys, come on. This is just what I found in the last 15 hours. And it's, it really is uh, just heartbreaking to see so many being just flooded out. Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, Texas, um, Arkansas. The only way in and out of Grafton, Illinois, is from the north on Route 3. Flooding has all other roads shut down. Now the business is still open or hurting for customers. News Force Paige Holsey is live tonight in Grafton. Paige. Right now, the Mississippi is overtaking the road that would normally separate these businesses from those houses over there, leaving those families basically on an island by themselves. And back over here, the water is just creeping higher and higher into the basement. Some business owners I talked to said they are staying open. They want to be open, but it's just so hard for customers to get to them here because of all the road closures. 
Well, as you can see, you can bring your fishing gear and sit on the deck and fish. Um, water has come up and it's very fast. The speed is coming up. The very fast speed it's coming up. A very fast speed. It's probably seen a lot of water. Down the street, guest house owner Dan Bechtold has also weathered more floods than most. It's like anything else. This is part of grafting. And we accept it for the fact that uh, we know once we get in, clean it up, and the river goes back in its banks, uh, business will be good. Business will be good. You know what? You can't accept this. This, this is not, this is, what we are living is unprecedented. We have never seen this kind of rain suddenly flood out neighborhoods all over the country. And, wow, it seems to be happening at the exact same time <clears throat> for so many areas. This is unprecedented. You have been living this for the recent years. Why? Because man is using weather as a weapon. Oh man, we can't get through to anybody. Unbelievable. We're using a boat to get back and forth. Both business owners know there will be plenty of cleanup ahead but they are counting on the tourists to return after that. You can't fight with Mother Nature, so you... Please. It is not Mother Nature. I, I want this guy to be fired. Rain, like what we've seen here lately, most of us hunker down and ride out the storm, right? But KCTV 5's Carolyn Long is here to introduce us to some neighbors who literally go immediately into panic mode. Carolyn, what's this all about? What's this all about, Carolyn? You know, these these reporters, their affect shows like they're almost enjoying this. Why are people in panic mode, Carolyn? Because people are losing their homes. Do you know how often I don't curse for you guys? I, God. It's all about well, I'll tell you what, Brad, here in this charming Waldo neighborhood, heavy rainfall brings back painful memories of past storms that have led to flooded basements. And as feared, it has happened again. And they point the blame squarely at the city. The owners of seven homes in this neighborhood near 83rd and Jarbo have held their breath, quite literally, since 2008. Anytime they go down to their basements. When there's so much rain, the um, sewer line backs up and it shoots up through our floor drains and raw sewage comes into our basement. Two feet of water, uh, sewage water, is a disgusting thing to see. It's something that you would see within a horror movie probably. There's too much pressure from the city side and it just shoots up. At times it's been almost like a you opened a fire hydrant. <laughs> Jill Thomas and her neighbors say the problem stems from the city's collapsed sewer line that is incorrectly attached to the storm drain, and the city doesn't deny it. Uh, this just happened last fall. I had about two feet of water, which the city did take responsibility for, but unfortunately, not for lack of trying, they're not willing to do the work to fix the sewer problem. While Andrew Cutler is appreciative, the city has helped with cleanup and even reimbursed him for a damaged washer and dryer, water heater, and HVAC system, the source of the problem remains. The city was nice enough to come in and offer cleanup, um, but we're right back to where we started now with waste on the floor and the walls destroyed. Leaving them with three problems, the obvious mess and foundation damage, the decrease in home value, and the health concern. Well, we have five kids and we're worried about infectious wastes flooding our basement. I'd just like the city to fix something. I'd like them to finally take care of this. I mean, it's affecting all of our lives. I feel like I have post-traumatic stress every time it rains. Well, I bet you do. We have re- Well, are you not getting? that all of this is being done deliberately to you. It's being done deliberately to you. And don't thank your city because it offered some cleanup. Um, this is only going to persist until people band together, meet with one another, organize, think outside the box, get rid of these officials who do nothing but raise your taxes and then destroy your homes. We have to stop being nice.
okay? We really need to stop being nice and trusting and accepting. We're being destroyed. All right, so all I've shown you is Iowa, Illinois, Missouri. This is St. Louis, Missouri. All of these um, videos have been posted yesterday, just yesterday. Areas, Nebraska, Illinois, Iowa, they have been flooded for six weeks. six weeks. And more rain for the next 10 days in the St. Louis area, in this area of the country. You will hear more levee breaks, the Mississippi rising, and more people having their homes and businesses destroyed. This is incredibly heartbreaking, but they hit hard the heartland. Why? Farm country. Farm country. You think these farmers are going to be able to produce crops this year? No. And possibly not next year. Because of all the silt and everything that comes with these floods. Their soil damaged. Please, all of you who just think this is, well, this is the flooding. It's, you know, you just have to accept, hey, oh, it's Mother Nature. Oh, act of God. Oh, no! Ask yourselves, why is this happening all over the country? And now Canada, Quebec, and Ontario, and Montreal, and Ottawa. Why? We never lived this before. Yeah, we would have the occasional flood. This is happening now several times a year in a whole lot of areas. The same area, several times a year. You do the search, you'll see. Ah, areas that I've shown you already were flooded out ten months ago. We have a whole lot of people hurting, and I, I, I don't, don't you think we need to do something different? In Illinois, Governor J.D. Pritzker declared 34 counties disaster areas. That includes Joe Davis, Whiteside, and Carroll counties in the state line. Pritzker says that ensures state support. Chicago, Illinois, and St. Louis, Department Missouri, is running two Americans 24-7 to support sandbagging efforts. The Department of Transportation to communities battling flood water. The Department of Corrections is running inmate crews 24-7 to support sandbagging efforts. The Department of Transportation's handling the delivery of pumps and hoses. Clean drinking water kits and shelters are also being prepared to bring into those affected areas. Unbelievable. And, you know, In Illinois, you have these Department of Water you know, or utility uh, companies. They're engaged in the weather modification. So they come in with the pumps. Oh, aren't you so nice? You're so nice, man. You're helping out and you know, you didn't cause this. It was mother nature. Grafton, Illinois. Only you can't get into it. I, all right. Um very quickly I want to show you what I caught last night. <laughs> At 1.30 a.m., this was the storm. In a video that I had posted yesterday, or I don't know, maybe 36 hours ago, I showed you the storm that was 
in North Texas, leaving Oklahoma, going down. Uh, uh, you know, the frequencies are just off the charts. But let me just take you to right here. You can see all of the frequencies taking place. And I didn't even show you the videos of Texas, and I'm going to be posting another video because people need to get uh, an accurate picture of what is taking place. You know, the big picture as best as I can, you know, get the videos on what is taking place. But this is not, this is not Mother Nature. This is man. Look at these harp neck thread rings throughout the entire uh, storm. The extremely low frequencies, I say this over and over and over again, look at the harp neck thread intersecting here in the Gulf. We're being deliberately destroyed. These harp neck thread rings, and of course they had tornadoes, uh, tornadoes in Arkansas, tornadoes in Texas, uh, more flooding in Texas, flooding in Arkansas. Yeah, guys, we all need to start really thinking differently. We've got to change. Look at that uh, straight-edged precipitation on its way to Arkansas. It's heartbreaking to see this. Um, people are losing their homes, man, okay? They're losing their businesses. They're losing their livelihoods. And yeah, some people are losing their lives. We need to start responding to the tragedy of what is taking place. Uh, you know, we have to ask ourselves, is my response appropriate? People need help. All links are